Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 421 days, Ukraine stands strong against the forces of the Russian invasion. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg visited Kyiv yesterday, reports Interfax Ukraine. Stoltenberg paid tribute to the memory of the fallen Ukrainian warriors on St. Michael's Square, visited Bucha in the Kyiv region and met President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky. After the meeting, Volodymyr Zelensky said that he expects a package of security guarantees to be adopted at the NATO summit in Vilnius this summer. He stressed that Kyiv needs something more than the current format of relations, including the understanding when Ukraine will be in NATO. The president added that Ukraine wants security guarantees along the way, which should not be considered as an alternative to membership. The secretary-general expects that in Vilnius, members of the alliance will reaffirm their support for Ukraine, which will be provided for as long as necessary. He believes that they will also further strengthen the NATO package of aid for Ukraine. Stoltenberg acknowledged that the issue of membership and guarantees would be an important element of the agenda at the meeting. According to him, NATO is prepared for this. Stoltenberg stressed that the main focus of the NATO members is to ensure the advantage of Ukraine, so that Ukraine is guaranteed to continue to exist as a sovereign democratic state in Europe. Later in his evening video address, Volodymyr Zelensky said that neither the majority of Ukrainians, nor the majority of Europeans, nor the majority of the inhabitants of the entire NATO space will understand the leaders of the alliance if a well-deserved political invitation to the alliance is not sounded for Ukraine at this summit in Vilnius. Ukraine did everything to ensure that our application was approved, stressed Zelensky. Volodymyr Zelensky asked Secretary-General Jan Stoltenberg to help overcome the restraint of partners in the supply of some weapons, namely long-range modern aviation, artillery and armored vehicles, reports Ukrainform. Zelensky also told the media that this visit is a symbol that NATO is ready to start a new chapter in relations with Ukraine. Ukraine air defense destroyed 1,500 Russian aerial targets in the last five months and now needs more ammunition, reports RBK Ukraine. According to the Air Force Command, since the start of the full-fledged war, Ukraine overall destroyed another 600 units of manned equipment, planes, helicopters, at least 1,500 unmanned aerial vehicles. Now Ukraine is waiting for the necessary supply from partners. Denmark and the Netherlands announced plans to hand over 14 Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine, reports Militarny. According to the Danish Defense Ministry, these tanks for Ukraine will be purchased from German industry. The overall budget of this package of support is about $147 million. It is expected that the Leopard 2 tanks could be delivered in early 2024. Estonia to send a batch of ammunition for 155mm artillery to Ukraine, reports Deutsche Welle. According to the Defense Ministry, it will be sent within Estonia's initiative to send 1 million shells to Ukraine, approved by the EU. The country will also send night vision devices and ammunition for small arms to Ukraine. The ministry didn't provide any further details. The EU can't launch a 1 billion euros worth ammunition provision plan for Ukraine due to France-Poland disagreement, reports European Pravda. The main issue of the dispute is how much this ammunition provision contracts should be restricted to manufacturers from the EU and whether companies from countries such as the US and the UK should be included in the program. France favors keeping the funds within the European Union and accuses Poland of publicly putting all the blame on Paris. We would really appreciate if you could recommend us to your friends and family, as well as share information on social media. This way more people would learn about the podcast and truth about Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Russian media inform about two unidentified drones, reports Ukrainska Pravda. A drone allegedly launched from Ukraine has exploded in Belgorod Oblast, Russia. Another drone, equipped with a camera, crashed at the aircraft parking area at Sko Airport. No explosives were found in the second drone. A Russian aviation bomb fell off the Su-34 fighter bomber and exploded in Belgorod, reports ICTV. The Russian Aerospace Forces informed that the residential buildings were damaged as a result of the incident, but there were no victims. 
At the same time, local media reported that four apartments and several cars were damaged, two people were injured. The Washington Post informs that Ukraine's intelligence was preparing strikes on Russian troops and mercenaries of the Wagner private military company in Syria with the participation of Kurdish formations, reports Ukrainska Pravda. The leak of the secret U.S. document shows that the purpose of opening a new battlefield thousands of kilometers from Ukraine was to impose costs and losses on the Russian army and the Wagner Group, which is active in Syria, which would probably force Moscow to redeploy its resources from Ukraine. Last December, President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky ordered to stop the planning of the operation. The media believes that possible reasons were pressure from the U.S., the limitations of Ukrainian drones, doubts that the attacks could be successful, or the success of military intelligence operations in Russia. <music> Kyiv began creation of the National Military Memorial Cemetery, reports Ukrainews. According to the mayor of Kyiv, Vitaly Klitschko, it will be situated near the neighboring settlement of Bukivnya. The total area of the cemetery will reach almost 100 hectares. The Highlights from Ukraine podcast is a commercial initiative of just two people, and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we keep going on. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.